Yeah. Well, let's get back to bottle stoppers. My plan was to pop in and have three cameras so we can look at this thing in a couple of different views and help you along. But I'm going to pop over to this. Oop, now to get on the right page to do this. Um, looking here on my late now. This is my bottle stopper mandrel. I get this from Niles. Um, she's an old friend. She does an awesome work, and she's got a she's got an idea what's happening with Turner, which I like. Um, but it's it tap it's a Morse taper. It's being held with the draw bar, and it comes in and runs very true. Quite rough. It's very true, and I can put a stopper in here and turn it. But suppose you don't have this. Let's look at some of the options. I'm going to look at where I started doing stoppers a long, long time ago, and I was taking my stronghold chuck with those dovetail jaws. See if I can do this. The dovetail jaws, and I was holding, <laughs> of all things. A three eighths inch bolt. That's right, just a bolt. Put the rip, run it through the, the, the chuck, and let enough stick out the way you get a good bearing. You've got the faces of better wood against, which is critical. You've got a bolt. And I got that at a hardware store expensively, 47 cents. Um, but that's how I used to hold it. Then I stepped up a notch and I went to this. This is a collet chuck. The machinist, you'll recognize it, but it's a collet chuck. The beauty of this chuck is you can hardly see the cracks. See the little crack right there? Well, when you tighten down on it, you actually tighten down on 99.1% of the loadable area of the circumference. That's practice stuff. But it'll grab the, the, the bit and hold it tighter than it and safer than that scrolling chuck will. Um, and all you do is pull down on draw bar and when you get done, you loosen up on it and pull it out. And that's if you're using a wooden plug or a plastic plug. Now draw bar, that's what's sticking in it right now. That's a piece of uh, 3 8 inch rod. It's long enough to go through my headstock and I put the piece just like this one, I put it my headstock on the back end I tighten up the nut on my 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 um, my rod, pull, pull it against the tailstock, and it locks it in. Now I have this for these two, my men, pen mandrel. I've got a drill press or a drill chuck number two for fitting that. Uh, all those items are available uh, to help making your work with a little bit less vibration. Now if I can put this chuck in and I can slap it with a hammer, and it'll be in my Morse taper. If my Morse taper's not clean, it'll be in there crooked. Um, but it'll be in a Morse taper. And I'm cutting, if I cut towards the crown, or towards the head, towards the tail stop, um, I have a good chance that harmonics will set up and I'll pop it right out. Well, with the draw bar, you can't drop it right out or pop it right out. So the difference is what you prepare for. All right, now we have that done. I will give this with us tonight because I could talk about this. Um, this is a great use for scrap wood. And I know that term is not for me because uh, there is no such thing as scrap wood. But I'm going to go in and say um, I found some stuff out in the yard. Let's go with this. It's just a block. Oh, closer, closer. It's just a block of wood I got from the yard. Uh, outside. I'm going to drill the hole in it. It's way off center. We'll talk about that in a minute because that was done on purpose. But that is not a big piece of wood. It's one and a quarter by one and a quarter by just under two inches long. You probably have a pile of that someplace. And that's that's okay because you've got a good collection of wood going. Um, or if you go to one of the trade shows and you buy this, this set Carolam or what it's laminated plywood in different colors. Mm -hmm. This one's ugly brown, 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 and gray. Um, but you can get this. This is not that expensive. You pay more than two or three bucks for it, you got robbed. But 
there used to be a firm in Florida that would sell it, uh, and it was dropped from another manufacturing thing. I wish I could find that that name again. It's Diamond Lamb, or Dyna? Diamond Wood, D D Y M O N D Wood. Diamond Wood. We're craft supplies. Craft supplies used to sell it. Uh, yeah. Somebody yeah. said Spectraply. Yeah, Spectraply. Yeah. Spectraply. There's also um, frog blanks, which are very high quality. Frog blanks are amazing. Oh, and, okay. and these things, well, these things out bring out a lot of color. I mean, they can. You play them a little bit, you can get some fantastic work out of them. Um, I had the one I found yesterday. It must be rolled on the floor just now. Um, also, also, uh, Rebecca DeGroote has been raiding her local uh, skateboard stores for broken skateboards and cutting up the broken skateboards and gluing the, the boards together, which are already partially colored, you know, ply like that. And she's made mm -hmm. some interesting pieces out of that, too. Yeah, I've seen that skateboard art. And some of that gets pretty wild. Yeah, she gets some herring bones going. It's cool. Yeah. So it's things you can play with. And this is a piece I did out of Spectra Ply. And it's the same brown and gray. Um, did a little simple shape. I didn't want to get into art. I wanted to get into how to turn simple shapes. But that's it. Now, I did this, this whole piece here with the 8 inch Ellsworth type gouge. Um, is it cut? nice for one reason i didn't abuse it uh and i say abuse it because when you get it it's gonna be square like this right okay now i'd have to be pardon me if i offend you i didn't mean don't mean to i'd have to be a a, a village idiot to put this on a lathe and start trimming it right away it is a laminated material and it could be drilled a little off center like this is and what it's going to do is hit on the corners and hit hard on the corners. And when it hits hard on the corners, it's going to blow it up or blow it off the lathe or snap off that, that dowel. But so why, what do you do about it? Well, you fix it right off the bat. This is not any math problems or anything else. All I did was take it to the bandsaw and I'm using a six tooth per inch because that's what's on it right now. And I knocked the corners off. So I went from four corners, beating the heck out of it, down to eight corners. And I'm not beating it up. And I have less of a blowout. And if you try this on anything small that you're turning, well, why does I say small? If you try it on anything you turn, you will find that you'll get a better start because you don't get that, that hammer effect. And that hammer effect does a lot to you. It hurts how you hold it. Uh, it hurts the alignment, it messes up the alignment, and it's dangerous. And I don't want to see you get hurt. That's a real important thing. I don't want to see you get hurt. And uh, the next part about this for I chuck up some wood is uh, what can you can't do turn? I got to show you this one because this is a piece of black palm. Black palm. That's a good looking piece. Yeah, and that's there's no absolutely no finish. I just took it off the lake an hour ago. I hadn't even finished sanding out of sand it to maybe I stepped up to maybe 320. But it's got some great color now. And that's the color to come. Yeah, it did look on it. That's the color to come out when you when you go ahead and, and seal it and, and bulletproof it. And I say bulletproof because you really have to go after these things with a CA finish or um, several coats of deck to protect it from the alcohol it's going to be around. But that's black palm. That is hell to cut. I'm being polite. That is hell to cut. All that gray is powder. All the black is the, the strength grain. There's a whole lot more powder than strength grain. That, what it means is when you cut this, you better be in control of your edge because your edge is everything you got. You can't plow this. It'll just tear up like you won't believe. I mean, and and it, it sands terrible too. But it's a beautiful piece of wood. It's unique and it's nice to play around with. 
Eddie, are there, is there more than one type of black palm? Because my the black palm I have is all black with a little bit of white in it. There is. Larry Zara and I, Larry from Texas, uh, Gulf Coast Turners, and I bought, each bought a three-foot length of this. It was almost $30 for that three-foot length of inch and a half by inch and a half blackwood. And it was labeled black palm. And a couple of months later, when we went back to the Columbia Yard, you know what I'm talking about, um, in Ponchatoula, their black palm was a different color, different type. Well, my black palm is black with, it's the reverse of what you have. It's black with white specks, white in it, versus white with black in it. I have a piece I did, and that's even harder to cut. I did, oh. I, I did a lid out of it and domed it so you see the, the color coming and going. And, and it's and nice, but... There's another thing I found on the black. I use it for accent on the on top of some of my finials. And what I found is to prevent it because it chips so badly and splits so easily, I wound up soaking it with super glue and that greatly in increased my likelihood of it actually making it through the process. Well, my best friend out here today, and I'll look and see where I moved it to, uh, is that bottle of super glue. Because on a black palm and even on a spectra fly, um, I will drizzle it with a super glue before I get to the final sanding and finishing because number one, it tightens it up. And once you put the first coat, and I'm talking regular CA coats, once you put the first coat on, you will see what your finish will look like. It's not a finish, but it'll let you know what your finish will look like. You'll see the highs and the lows and the, the scratches and all that because you're working with a little bit of piece of wood. So if you have that that semi-finish on, that'd be nice how to say that, um, it'll, in, it'll enhance defaults. It'll hand, the, enhance them, and then you go back and work on them again. Always what I'm, mind, what I'm you, saying is black palm chips out so badly with the grain, I, I wound up putting super glue on it to us, to hold it together so I can turn it. Yeah. Oh, and that's what I would have done to this piece I have here, uh, but I wanted to cut it dry so I could show the piece. And really I had to recut it three times and go sharpen my gouge on my third pass <laughs> because it was coming apart. And if I'd done the CA, I probably would have got around that. I'm looking for the super glue right here in front of me. I'm looking for the wrong color bottle. Um, but that's, I'll use that super thin CA to tighten it up. And, you know, if you turn anything soft, like two by four, yeah, um, and it's starting to separate, come apart or whatever, do the CA drip over it. Just, uh, and it goes in so quick and it's curing the second it hits the air. Uh, do the light drip on it, let it get in there. Now here, if you wear glasses or you're wearing your face shield, give it a minute. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time with acetone getting it off. All right, I'm going to pop back over here, and y'all bear with me. This is the, the chuck, and it is a, a mandrel. That face of it right there at the end is the same size as a socket on the bottle stoppers I'm using. I'm using a stainless steel product. Mine's colored to a gold, and I have a couple other ones but it's the same size. That is a key size. I don't want to go smaller. I can be larger and have it finished. Smaller just doesn't work. And you put them on just by, I drilled the hole, just like I showed you. I drilled the hole, and then I just have to thread it on. Well, I know I'm going to cheat a little bit and power up the lake a little. This ain't one, this ain't one I drilled for this program. Change to another rod. Yes. You drill a hole that is a little bit smaller than three eighths, and because I still can't have not found my package of parts to do this with, because I have a, a set a, a box of parts dedicated to doing bottle stoppers, um, I'm kind of winging this a little bit. I, I don't have the right drill sizes and things, but it's not an excuse. As a matter of fact, but I'll start by getting a little 
tail stock correction on it. Once it starts threading, it just walk itself in. Now here's the deal. You can't see the far side. I'm not going all the way up to the, to the mantle here. I drilled it on a slight angle on purpose because that happens to me. But now I'll bring my tail stock up. Part of the, the yeah. I'll bring the tail stock up, put a little bit of pressure on it. That pressure so now I can fix that piece that goes against the mandrel down here. I'm going to take and run in with a, a, a parting tool and clean that end up, face it off, if I may. And that way, when it sits on a, when the bottle stopper pulls up tight to it, uh, we won't have any, any gaps. You don't want a gap there. You know, you want to clean it up for that. Speed is about uh, 1800 or so. Because I don't like dulling my tools, I switch over to an older type of uh, paper to go up against the steel. Right now, I just did the steel. And I did the old extract. And you can see how this stuff fractures off so easy. Now, I'm at the point that bottom has been dressed off. Now, that'll give me a great connection between the bottle and the stopper. You don't want people to be able to see between them. It's just not, it's not pleasant. Okay, now we're still between centers. I'm gonna knock the round off this. Now let's, they call it a roughing gouge, but it's not a roughing gouge, it's a gouge. And it's just like a bowl gouge, a little bit deeper V. And let's see, I've got the corners knocked back a little bit. I don't like that high point roughing gouge. That's okay, it works. Always rubbing a bevel. Notice the tool angle, it's not going straight in, stabbing it. I'm running that bevel. Always that bevel. I don't like I don't like checking wood when it's spinning because I've yeah, it's one of the last of years. But if you look on a camera was better, you could see it. it it's color starting to come out. And I'm not up to full speed. I'm going to crank up now. I'm on the second stage. So I'm going to get up to around 1900, 2000 RPMs. And now I start getting creative. And I can go anywhere I want to go. If you want about designs, look at chess pieces. Look at antique vases or vases. Um, Look at pleasant shaped uh, tops of pottery and, and bowls, etc. They're all like a modified spindle or modified finial. And that will give you some ideas of where to go for some of these shapes. I got a 3 8 inch Ellsworth type ground.
this was all slicing cuts. If I was going to the tool flat with the, the V straight up, it would tear this thing apart. So I roll it over on the edge, got a good slicing and moved in there. I don't want to go uphill. This is about halfway where I want to go for shape. I hate the way these cameras are working right now. But I'm very coarse. I've done all slices, and I don't have any holidays of voids down through here. It's cutting up really nice. Now, if I'm sort of happy with that shape, I'm going to go ahead and start in with the simplest thing we can do. I'm going to scrape it a little bit using a regular three quarter inch wide or one inch wide bull nose scraper. That is actually a finer cut than I could have possibly got with my, um, my my gouge because I've peeled off the outer level of it and it makes it really nice to work with. Um, if I abuse it, it's going to go crazy on me. Now, now I have to detail my top. I'm a little loose on a mandrel. I stopped it a second ago. but um, And I could put a piece of tissue paper in it and tighten up, but we're going to keep rolling. General cut. Not like that one, that was a catch. Because I was between centers right now, I can get a good cut on this, a good slice. And I'm pointing out that it's a slice. It's where your blade actually cuts the wood away instead of tears it away. Um, I've got a problem watching demos where the wood goes flying clean across the room. I don't like that. I like cleaning up the outside room. Oh, well, y'all know I don't like cleaning up anyway. Get back to it. Now, I'm way off my mandrel a little bit. I'm still going to go with the slicing cuts. That's why I've stopped it. Yeah, I should have put that little piece of tissue paper underneath it. Okay. Looks like I busted my own, I'll throw my drawers. That's how this works. Um, when I stopped it earlier, I messed up. I messed up the threads on this. What do I do about it? I want to save this piece. I don't want to lose it. I have a miracle drug that'll fix this. It's called CA. Drizzle a little bit of C down, CA down here and let it set for a little while, which means we won't, you and I will not be doing this together. Uh, and then I put it back on my mandrel and a little line of CA, I ain't go to the medium thick, a little line of CA will help you recreate those threads again and get them back on. But all in all, it was a quick project. Um, we was talking about how fast these things can go. That is what I have left. I should have finished it up, but I couldn't get there. Um, and go ahead, please. There are threaded inserts, knurled that you can put in that hole 
to fix the threads. Yeah, I get those at the hardware in the corner. Yeah. Yes. U tap, U taps or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think I have a box of them around here somewhere. Um, I find that if I would have stopped early, first realized it, and performed the CA fix, and went back on on it, that and a little piece of miracle paper. They sell it like toilet paper. Um, that'll help. Even a piece of wax paper. Uh, just make sure anything you put in is not so strong you can't get it back apart. With this, I can get it back apart. Um, if you use something that will react to the CA, you might as well hit it with a hammer. It ain't coming off. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, we were talking with Doug, and it was about projects that you can do quickly for craft sales and flea markets. Do you, know, you know the stuff I'm talking about? Um, this is a 15 minute project. Is that right there. Now, if you take this one I did a couple of days ago, if I take this and I, whoop, where am I gonna get it? That's fine. I take this and I burn a few lines in it for accent. So I've got one grooved out in it now. Burn a few lines in it for accent Seal it with a deaf lack or sanding sealer. Buff it out a little bit and then put get it ready for uh, lacquer. I could have this out in 10 minutes. Now, where's the cost at? If you put these stopper bottoms on it, <clears throat> I sat down here, everything was laid out where I could get to it and I must have bumped something and it's rolled on the floor. But if you want to use the, the stainless steel stoppers or top poppers, because they make top poppers, top poppers to go to work with this. If you want to use that, you're talking about five or six dollars for that part. If you want to go to Harbor Freight, Tree Line, Penn State Industries, or a few other firms. You can find the natural cork ones that'll go with a 3 8 inch hardwood dowel. If you're buying the cork ones and they sell the dowels, get the dowels with them. Uh, their dowels are straight cut uh, hardwood and they've got a little glue uh, divot in them to help them bind up. Um, and they're stronger than the, har the, home, the Hobby Lobby uh, uh, dowels would be. Harvey Lo Hobby Lobby's dowels are made more for decoration than spring. You want one for spring. Uh, if you're using the plastics, the plastics fit over a dowel and the same thing. Buy the dowel where you buy the plastics. Um, you can have less than $2 invested in creating this if you paid for the blank. And the finish is quick. And Trace, the way he does his uh, Christmas ornaments, he does a bunch of them and he hangs them on a piece of wire and he sprays them. Um, you, same thing. You get everything ready, wrap a piece of string around it, um, and get the dowel. And this one, I could stick that piece of hardwood dowel in here and hang it by the dowel before I put the stainless on it, and I'll put a finish on here. And then I can take that finish, go over to the deal or other buffing system, and buff it off, make it shine like a diamond, add a little wax to it. Um, but that's how you can decorate it. That is a simple, really quick uh, stopper detail. I've got about 20 of them prepped the next couple of days. I hope to get them all knocked out because um, Christmas is coming for me too and Thanksgiving, and I'm trying to get a meal. So, it's any here, questions, folks? What is SI metal? I didn't hear that. Hello? What is W metal? My volume way down, way off. Check it out. I'm getting a feedback, but I cannot get the question. What? Am I on? Yeah, yeah I can hear you, Eddie, muscle. but I can't hear the other ones. No. No, we're not muted out. So somebody's got a little audio thing going, but that's okay. It's, uh, and our, 
sir, your audio is not coming through clearly. Hey, remember, you can do this. You can ask those questions anytime throughout the program. Uh, we're not a stickler for that. We really can't be. Um, all right. Anybody else have questions on this? No, good to see you turning, Eddie. It's yeah, it's good to see you in the shop. <laughs>